statistics from World Food Program before the outbreak of COVID-19 indicated that 795 million people in the world did not have enough food to live a healthy life. And the vast majority of them live in developing countries. Unfortunately, Sub-Saharan Africa is the region with the highest prevalence of hunger, with about 235,000 in West Africa facing emergency food insecurity. Now, with the pandemic, which has drastically affected economic activities, food production, and even purchasing power, the issue of food security is one of the compelling topics in Nigeria and the world. Well, that's why it's our special report for this episode. You're welcome. I'm Ini John Mekwa. The World Food Program Situation Reports for July 2020 shows that compounding effect of COVID-19 in West and Central Africa could drive 57.5 million people into acute food insecurity. The program's report also shows that with 5 million people, Nigeria has the highest number of people in crisis in the 15 countries analyzed in the region. Also, according to the United States Department of Agriculture, Nigeria had about 50% of West Africa's food insecurity population in 2019. A visit to some markets in Nigeria seems to support the observation that feeding the about 200 million population may be raising concerns. In Lagos State, some traders in Ido, a major food stuff market, say the impact of COVID-19 outbreak has spilled to every part of their business and affected price and demand. We are fed us. Even food we are eating. Everything we are selling here. Even a uh, bag of uh, uh, rice we are selling 20, now this is 27.5. Beans, we are selling 25,000, this is 35,000 now. They are selling maize before, they are selling maize, 8,005 now, everything is very dear. Now we are buying maize, the uh, bag of maize, we are buying 20,000 now. The plate of maize now, where we are selling it when before Coro Henta, we are selling 500. Maize now is 800 for a paint. Even meat, we are buying wheat, 12,000. Now we have had money. Now we are buying wheat, 12,000 for a bag of a, a bag of a wheat. Now we are selling wheat, 14,500 for a bag. Now before we sell the paint, we are selling paint now one two. Before the advent of COVID-19, we are selling it at 12,000, 13,000. So I even selling it 11,000, depending on the market that we used to bought it. But currently. It's of 20,000 now, we are saying 21. And actually, there is effects of COVID-19 on this. Even the measures put in place to curb the spread has had its consequences. While markets have been allowed to operate as part of essential services, the activities are controlled in line with laid down considerations. You see, our loading here, because of this one day of one day down, when we want, we, if we offload, the people that are bought here, because the, the, the driver that come, come to come and load here, because we are not marketing in the second day, the market will be full here. Even those who, buy, who bought from us will not be able to carry be, because of that one. So it affects our selling. Because it is when these people carry their load go and they sell before they come back to come and, to come and buy another one. So it's affecting us. Even we have went to the chairman of our local government, to allow us at least, even if you are not selling, let our vehicle be loading. We are, we, uh, the market will be closed, but our vehicle will be loading. Because we, we, we have to go to him because we realize that the police are affecting us, that they say we should not sell on that day. And we don't know what is happening there, in the north, where they bring these goods. Every day now, the market is pushing up. We believe, we, to, to our own understanding was that, those even farmers too, they are unable to go to the farm to bring. So the little they have there, they are putting, they are putting, uh, putting up a um, price on it more than what is it before. Then we always tell our people that is they have to waste. Um, we have these face marks, but we are having challenges on that one too, because those who are carrying goods, even when they are moving, they always say that they feed it, that even if they continue like that, they will choke up. So we, even we, are, we insist that because. Some people from the local government and the um, 
state government something, they always come. So we, are, we said, come, even if you are not going to use it when you are carrying it, put it in, in your own trap, they will see that you have it. These are the challenges we are having. This favorably compares with the opinion of buyers and sellers in the state tag, the food basket of the nation, Benui. Before, we have been buying a uh, guinecom, 450 naira before. But because of this COVID-19 now, guinecom is now 800 to 900 naira now. Now we are selling this rubber as 1,300 naira. But before, it's 900 naira. So actually, due to this pandemic, the prices are increasing every day due to the lack of uh, the farmers they are not able to transport their this thing their goods to the market and it's so scarce in the market actually and so also we have um, we have we are selling rice local rice yeah before local rice we do sell local rice 400 naira per moody this moody 400 naira but now the local rice is 600 naira and we have the one of 650 per moody and before it's 400 naira the, the buyers, the customers, they are not able to come to the market to patronize the uh, products due to the COVID, the, the lockdown and the distant COVID-19. Some people are afraid to come and buy. So now you can't compare the, the distant the market. Before we are selling, people are patronizing, they are coming the every day. You see market crowd, but now you can't see all this in now, actually. <laughs> While majority of the dealers in food stuff have laid the blame for the hike in prices at the doorstep of COVID-19, there are others who have observed that the middlemen may not also be helping matters. Benway State farmers should be counting more money now with the increase in food prices, but the reverse seems to be the case. The prices that we find in the market now, um, the unfortunate thing is it's not the poor farmers that are making money from these increased prices. It's not the poor farmers. It was the poor farmers, I'll be sitting down here and I'll tell you I'm very happy. It's not. Um, it's the middlemen. It's the people who are taking advantage of these farmers and, and, and making the prices of food go, go up higher and to turn around and make sure that people can't afford it. And so it's unfortunate, but it's something that definitely government has to step in at the state level uh, you know, at the local government level, state level, at the federal level, um, all levels of government, we have to um, step in and make sure that um, these are criminals. It's nothing short of criminality to do what is happening now with the prices of food. Just um, food prices are, it, it's, it's ridiculous, including transport. Understandably, when you go around Benue State, especially, you see that. Um, there's a lot more planting going on. We have more farmers. Um, by giving these holidays, Governor Otom has created more farmers in Benue State than um, people believe that they're going to be. Civil servants went back to farms. People who were farming one hectare went to 10 hectares, went to 20 hectares. Even myself, I have um, more than 10 hectares of farmland that I'm cultivating right now. And so, but that's not enough. You know, your state, South South Nigeria, where cassava and maize are their comparative advantage, producing these food crops have not been maximized. And once again, farmers point accusing fingers at the middlemen and other opposing factors. The problem facing farmers is the uh, price, uh, price control. We sell our products at the price we can sell. You know, during the days of uh, 60s, 70s, we have bought for all these things. There is a cocoa board, there is a coffee board, which controls the sales and marketing of all these uh, uh, products. But now there is no such. You can sell your own at the price you like, I sell my own at the price I like. And the middlemen are the people enjoying the work of the, the, the poor farmer in the farm. Because they will just come into your farm, buy it at the at the rate because of the we uh, continue look about Tawani Irini. That's the problem we are facing. But if government can come to our aid, like say buying whatever we produce at the price that this local government, if you produce a cassava this year, this amount we are buying. This local government, this amount we are buying. You know. It will, even if we ginger the youth to come into farming business, the population of the youth in all your states, if government take a proper 
care uh, of uh, farming activities. I think the uh, uh, the agriculture should take three quarters of the youth in, uh, youth employment in the state if it is properly managed. What's wrong with the way they're managing it now? You see, the problem facing farmers is many. It's many. Some of the farmers want to expand. There is no equipment to expand. If you want to, even if you are on uh, uh, five hectares this year, next year you want to go into t uh, 10 hectares. You know, you have to employ more hands. But the bulldozer per day is about 60 or 70,000 naira per day. And uh, to, to, bulldoze, uh, to clear about uh, 10 hectares, the bulldozer will use three to four days. After that, you buy diesel. Then you pay for the uh, for the loan that will take the 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 the, the bulldozer to the site. So where the farmer get all that money? But if if government can come to our aid, at least to clear the land for us at a minimized rate, so that the farmers can be paying this money gradually, maybe yearly, when they are producing. But economist Bismarck Rewani has another explanation to the various price hike and threats to food security. COVID-19 and the lockdown increased the barrier to entry. Since I cannot move, and if I can move, I have to move between certain hours. Let us assume before the curfew became 10 to 4 a.m. When the curfew was, I think it was 6 p.m. to what have you, people had to rush very quickly. So if you go to the market about 5 p.m. or 4 p.m., one hour or two hours before the coffee, the prices went up because people had to buy very quickly and go away. There was panic buying, right, initially. Now, but let us take a look at what has happened. As the lockdown relaxed, and in May, the Bureau of Statistics data showed that 43%, no, 71% of Nigerians were idle, unemployed, or underemployed because they were stuck in their houses. By June, this number dropped to 43% because people could move around and do things. So the impact of the lockdown was at first paralysis, then gradual reopening. And gradual reopening means gradual increase in activity. And there are two things. One is disruption of production because fertilizers are not going in the seedlings and there's no demand. 18% of domestic activity in this country is trade. And all those, trading is a function of border closure and so many things. So that disruption has killed trading and their income. So those people have no money to buy things. Secondly, even if you produce them, to get them in the market, because the borders were closed, even though food was allowed, but when you get to the checkpoint, there are thousands of cars, and you have to wait. So it, what used to, the trip from Benin to Lagos before, which was, used to take maybe four or five hours, we now, now took 10 hours, because you were waiting in the queue to get to the checkpoint. And that adds to the price and the cost, the cost and the price. So, but now that the borders have been open, that is the inter, you know, domestic borders. Now that airports have started flying and going domestically, you are beginning to see a semblance of return to normalcy, right? And that we would begin to see the premium on on the pricing, which was exploited, if you use the word exploit, which was um, exploited by producers and suppliers, we we're going to come down. But if you look at the inflation data, the inflation data shows that food inflation is still about 15.6 percent, while Headline inflation is 12.56%. Um, why? Because some people have no money to buy. If you have no money to buy, then the prices will go down, right? But there are other factors that go into pricing, including the exchange rate translation and pass-through, including logistics costs. Don't forget the price of petrol went all the way down to 121 Naira, and now it's back to 145. So when the price went down, we didn't see transport fares go down. Now the price has gone up, transport fares remain the same. So we are now beginning to see that uh, the price elasticity of demand for these products is now playing out into the pricing of the products. Data generated from the West Africa Network for Peace Building National Early Warning System News indicates that armed banditry recorded a death toll of over 1,000 people in Zamfara, Kaduna, Katsina, Sokoto and Niger states between January and December 2019. In Katsina, over 2,000 people have been killed, 500 communities destroyed and over 33,000 people displaced. 
Further reports also reveal that over 10,000 cattle were lost, while 2,688 hectares of farmland and 10,000 houses destroyed within 2011 and mid-2018 in Zamfara State. The figures have not reduced in 2020, going by the number of protests by residents in some of these states, as well as the level of food items that end up in the markets. Perishable items we sell in the market is something you cannot hide. If we farm it anywhere across the board in Nigeria, you must bring it to the farm to sell. Two things will happen to you if you don't sell. You, you lose everything because it's perishable items that have a little last span, highest two, three days. So how do you keep that one? How do you keep, it's not a yam. It's not something that's like a stone that you keep to so say, okay, okay, or, or greens that you can save and say, okay, after one year or so, you bring it. These are perishable items that are essential that people need it on daily basis. And of course, this thing, you cannot hide them. There's no way you can hide them. It's either when you travel from the farm, you bring it to the market and sell. But because of these insecurity issues, the banditry will go to the farm and shoot the farmer and say, we ask you not to come to the farm. So many things are happening now. I'm telling you, it's a serious issue that's affecting us in the market. It's affecting everybody. People will not know because this is Lagos and this is where they bring the goods from everywhere. Every angle of the country brings food. But at a time where a particular area that is doing much, like in our state, you know, they are doing much of all these items. Like being in state, they do yam. They have an issue, they can't go to the farm. When you are going to the farm, you have to like looking up. You can't even be able, you can't you even be able to do well in the farm because you are scared. Anything could happen to you, you don't have security. And like a normal day, one person will just go to the farm and feel comfortable, you do your farming. Now you'll be looking up left and right. You even have mistake on where you are farming your things. The same thing is so good to where people are doing a lot of farming of uh, onions. Now in their farm they're having issues. In Kazna say we all we have rodo and tomatoes. They have a lot of the same thing in Zaria, uh, in Kaduna State. All this cut off area that are doing tomatoes and all that we have having issues. So it's a serious issue that federal government need to take action on it, or else people will be suffering. And again, if you have money, you won't be able to have access to the market. All these farmers that we have given money to normally we assist them with money to buy fertilizer, you know, to buy to get the fertilizers and also give them money for seeds, they purchase exactly the purchases we want in the market. But they've gotten the money and they can't afford the money back to us because we know what they're facing. We can't even ask them the money because normally when they bring their goods, we deduct a little money from what they bring. Now the money we have given them will not come back to us because they have an issue, they have an issue. We understand that. We are we understand that. And secondly, if there is no farming in the north, there's absolutely no way they can get the food down here. So we are going to write letters to the state government to assist us, the traders, with a big land where we can harm those things that we can be able to get them in Lagos so that the, the thing doesn't go out of hand. Aware of these challenges that have only been spotlighted by the global health crisis, the federal government, as well as state, have taken quite a number of steps towards ensuring that Nigerians feed well. The Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017-2020 to prioritizes agriculture and food security and sets out the government's commitment to funding social safety nets through 2020. The associated 2017 Budget of Recovery and Growth funds a countrywide social investment program that focuses on job creation, homegrown school feeding and cash transfers to vulnerable populations. In March 2018, the President Muhammad Buhari inaugurated a Food Security Council. The council, chaired by the President himself, comprises as members the governors of Kebi, Taraba, Plateau, Lagos, Eboy and Delta State, as well as relevant ministers. I will be inaugurating a National Food Security Council that I will personally chair. The council will include governors, ministers, security agencies, and key stakeholders across the entire agricultural segments of farming, fisheries, livestock management. <laughs> Our experiences today of clashes between farmers and husbandmen, all the challenges fishermen face due to global warming and other environmental factors clearly demonstrates that our quest for food security has a direct link to our national security objectives. 
The states have taken a cue from this. In the extreme part of the northwestern part of the country, the governor of Sokoto State, Aminu Tamboro, flagged off the 2020 sale and distribution of fertilizer to farmers at a subsidized rate of 4,000 naira per bag to boost farming activities. The fertilizer, which will be supplied by farmers directly at the rural areas at designated sale point, would be handled through a strategy which would check sharp practices by middlemen and fertilizer racketeers. COVID-19 pandemic has affected every aspect of our social and economic activities. Accordingly, we have mapped out plans and strategies on how to mitigate the cumulative effects of the pandemic currently ravaging the world, especially on the agricultural sphere. Again, this backdrop, government has procured a total of 24,270 met metric tons of assorted fertilizer, that is 450 trucks of MPK and 359 trucks of urea, worth 3.4 billion naira. In addition, the sum of 4 billion naira has been secured to support smallholder farmers who occupy over 80% of the farming population in the state to produce rice, wheat, tomato, and other food and cash crops. Plans have also been laid down in southwest Ekiti State, which has a record of about 2 million subsistence farmers. The government begins with the promise to make land accessible for rice plantation and an invitation to private sector partnership. Mr. Governor has graciously approved 2 billion naira for land clearing uh, projects in the state. And that one will help us to deliver about 8,000 acreage of land. There are areas that we want to do secondary clearing, areas where we want to do room plowing, and areas where we want to do uh, swamping clearing for rice production, low land rice production. But what I, I can assure you is that one of the major problems of agriculture in Ikiti is, is uh, accessibility of land. Not that lands are not available, we have lands, but that the lands are accessible. But in the, pro in the provision of two billion naira to do land clearing, you know what it means. That means land will be more accessible to our farmer. Because a lot of requests that we got from farmer in terms of people who wanted to go into land and to agricultural production is in the area of land. And I believe land is one of the things that we can provide for our people. In Kano State, thousands of commercial rice farmers in Kura local government area have received huge support through the agro-processing, productivity enhancement and livelihood improvement support project. The project is to boost the production level of rice in the local government area, which has shown comparative advantage in the crop. Rice farmers in Kura local government area of the state will receive support to improve production technologies in form of inputs, including improved seeds, that is Paro 44, fertilizers, agrochemicals, precious, and personal protection equipment. This is in tandem with the COVID-19 protocol. And while the individual strategy of the state government is commendable, there may be need to harmonize them for a more effective result. Mr. Ruwani proposes the adoption of a structural solution into the equation. You know, uh, we have to look for the structural solution to a structural problem. Handouts and palliatives and all, you know, it's good, good sound bite, good television show, good 10 o'clock news issue. The truth is that Fundamentally, after you give me the palliative, this, so next, next, the next day I come again for another palliative, the third day, life does not live, people do not depend on gifts and handouts. People depend on ability to work, opportunity to work, right, and definitely the ability to increase productivity. Food prices going up, production reducing because of not just COVID-19, but insecurity and then the call for structural solution. What's your take on the topic? We want to get your opinion either through our email or Twitter handle. That's it for now. I'm Ini John Mekwa.